Boeing's uh, space programs is ready for liftoff. They could use some good news, probably. The much-delayed orbital test flight of Boeing's Starliner vehicle scheduled to launch just moments uh, from now. It's supposed to be right at 636 uh, a.m. in Florida. Morgan Brennan joins us, uh, rejoins us uh, from the Kennedy Space Center. Morgan. Hey, Joe, that's right. So watch the clock because we're just a few minutes away. The outcome of this test could mean astronauts flying from American soil back to space within a month. That is a capability that was lost to the U.S. when the space shuttle program ended eight years ago. So here is what is on tap in the next couple of minutes. First trip of Boeing CST-100 Starliner. Right now it's sitting atop the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. People will not be on this flight, though a center pack dummy named Rosie will be. So will 600 pounds of cargo if all goes according to plan. Starliner is going to dock automatically with the International Space Station tomorrow, stay a week, and then come back to Earth. This is the final test for Boeing before NASA allows astronauts to get on board. Boeing does have competition, though. SpaceX is also part of NASA's commercial crew program. It's three years behind schedule, I should note that program, but it has awarded Boeing and SpaceX billions of dollars to develop their vehicles. Starliner, and in the case of SpaceX, uh, Crew Dragon, and you basically use them as taxis to and from the International Space Station. This is very much a race to see who gets to human space flight first. As I mentioned, this is the final test for Boeing uh, before it starts to do its crewed missions. In the case of SpaceX, they did their version of this flight back in March, but they still have one more critical safety test to get through as well. And nonetheless, all goes according to plan. We're looking at months until human space flight capability returns here. And guys, we are less than a minute from liftoff right now. You can see right there, that Space Launch Complex 41, uh, where this is going to take place. You know, two seconds, we'll see. Right at 36, huh? Okay, we're at 36. Late. Instantaneous launch window. It has to happen then for everything to go right for this Starliner vehicle to link up and automatically dock with the ISS early tomorrow morning. They're late. Which, by the way, yeah, which, by the way, automatically oh, docking is a feat in of itself. Let's see here. All right, 20 Thank seconds you. more. Good, so it's... We're, we're almost there, guys. Between 36 and 37. <laughs> Greenwich. Greenwich Meridian. <laughs> yeah. So you can um, see that little 10, cone nine, shape eight, on the top is Starliner. Seven, and here's six, the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, and lift off. The rise of Starliner and a new era in human spaceflight. The tower. Now 10 seconds into flight. People speak on the pitch over program. Body rate responses look good. Now 15 seconds in. The U's gone to close with control. Party money looks good at full thrust. See good check the pressure on the Yeah. Alright. So far seconds. so good. Looks good. Watching a rocket launch off like that never gets old, does it? That's never. David Faber. David, David Faber. <laughs> when we used to write, uh, well, yeah, he did. It was very profound. Yeah, it's uh, true. It gets, it's never gets old. It, yeah. it never gets old. All right. There you have it. That is Starliner atop an Atlas V rocket. Uh, launching, blasting off on its way to space. First ever trip to space for this vehicle, which Boeing has been de developing actually now for the better part of a decade, part of NASA's commercial crew program. In the next couple of minutes, about four minutes after launch, that Atlas V booster is going to separate from the upper stage, which is called the Centaur. Centaur is going to continue to take that Starliner uh, to orbit. About 15 minutes after launch, that's going to fall away, and Starliner is going to make its way towards the ISS, a process that altogether is going to take about 26 hours. Morgan, what happens? You can see that rocket powering away. When, when humans and astronauts are actually, human astronauts are actually on these flights, how would that take place? If it's able to happen months from now, we'd watch something just like this it, take off and then? Absolutely. And, and even though there are no people on board this flight today, every step that they have taken has simulated as if human beings, as if astronauts were on board, to act as if and basically create a dress rehearsal for when that first crewed mission will happen.
And then they would go so where? This to will the take ISF, yeah. uh, to the They're going to go to the International system. Space Station. Yeah, exactly. So this is the way you can think about. Yeah, so the way you can think about this program, this commercial crew program, Boeing and also SpaceX, which is part of it with its Crew Dragon, is they will be basically ferrying astronauts, up to four astronauts, to and from the International Space Station, as well as cargo. So in the case of this specific flight today, uh, this is going to bring 600 pounds of cargo, including, by the way, Christmas presents for the astronauts on board the ISS. Uh, and a dummy that's going to simulate the experience, the human experience as well. It's going to stay docked to the ISS for a week and then comes back for a ground landing at White Sands in New Mexico uh, next Saturday, December 28th, right after Christmas. Is that the trickier part of this? Is it? The, I mean, not that there's anything easy about rocket science with the takeoff or anything down the line, but how much is riding on that landing next week when it arrives back? The landing will be a very big deal, in part because it is a land-based landing. It's a ground-based right. landing. So the way that will happen is Starliner will come back to Earth, three parachutes will deploy, and then basically uh, a cushion will come out from underneath Starliner as it lands and, and hits down to the ground. So that part, of course, is very critical. Uh, many times you see spacecraft coming back and doing ocean landings, right? right? Uh, so that's important. Also, automatically docking with the International Space Station, which is what both Starliner and Crew Dragon uh, have been designed to do, is going to be a critical piece of this process as well. Basically, the spacecraft is designed to do that on its own. And you have astronauts aboard the ISS that can, they're prepped, they know what's going to happen, but they have no way to basically step in if anything goes wrong. It's a very key test. In, in terms so space of, is hard are there booster every rockets step on of the this way. That, are there booster rockets on this that fall off and this off. is complete? Yeah, they that, so yeah. they, the booster rockets yes. fall off. That's the difference between this and the space shuttle, which was a... No, those find. fell off, too. They fell off and they just came back yes. down. It looked like the same thing when it came back. That the end... Yes, so like this it. is... Hey, hey Morgan, uh, in reentry, is it... Remember how that was crucial for, for the space shuttle program, the tiles, and if a tile was missing, there, there'd be a problem. I mean, you still have that... You still have that issue, uh, all the friction coming back when, when you first re-enter uh, the atmosphere, so you got to get that right. It, it looked a little more Spartan than, than a space shuttle, too. It's really more of a, of a sh just to get people up there and back down. It, it just didn't look like you want to spend yes. a whole lot of time on it. I'll tell you, I have been actually been inside one of these Starliner mock-ups in Houston at NASA's uh, Johnson Space Center, um, and it's uh, it's. It's kind of small. To, yeah. to me, it's kind of small. They, they can fit four astronauts. There's actually capability for up to seven astronauts. It's 11 cubic meters. Uh, a lot has gone into the safety piece of this, uh, and that is part of the reason why commercial crew, they're originally looking to launch astronauts back in 2017. Uh, the reason we're poised to be three years behind is because of all of those uh, safety issues along the way and making sure everything is perfect yeah. for the human beings that get yeah. on board. And you can't fly that thing. I mean, you could fly the shuttle. This right. has just got parachutes and it drops down with a cushion. You can like the old time. Yeah. yeah. No, there will be you you can. You you can step in. Uh there there will be there will be that ability. Really? Um oh, okay. but yes, it's so much more technologically these vehicles are so much more technologically advanced. Uh, than what we've seen seen prior. I mean, it just continues to, that technology continues to develop. I've actually also flown some of the simulators, and it's a lot, it's a lot more intuitive and a lot sort of more straightforward and easier than you might expect.